Hello, what's poppin'? So today I just want to showcase how I actually built this table. So this table is a really nice uh, table with a lot of functionalities and also beautifully styled with Shad Yen as you can see here. So let me just showcase some features of it. So first, this features a beautiful light and dark theme. So it looks nice whether you're on light and dark theme and these are all uh, built with Shad Yen components. That's why it looks so nice. And you can basically filter by the column. So in this case, we have five columns. Uh, person ID, first name, last name, and date of birth, and even the action, right? The action is this, right? So in the action, you can press it and you copy the person's name to your clipboard, and you can just uh, paste it in here. Yeah, so that's the actions. You can have more actions, like let's say you are wanting to delete a row, so you can actually have another option here to delete a person. Then you're making a call back to your backend. And also you can basically uh, choose which columns you want to hide. So you, you give the person using the table an option so that they can filter out the columns they only want to focus on. So that's a nice feature of the table. And you can also filter by first name. So in this case, I can search for anyone with this name that contains D uh, or like any name that I want here. So let's say BR, you can see that first name with the BR will, will show up in the column. And so this feature is a nice uh, pagination. So we have buttons, right? So this, this will uh, do client-side pagination for you. So if you want to actually do server-side pagination, you can also extend, extend this functionality really easily. Yeah, so last feature is, of course, you can export to Excel. So when you press export to Excel, you can see that it's instant. So if you open up this My Spreadsheet 4, so I've been doing some testing, we can see that it exports out the whole data into a Excel spreadsheet here, which you can then do whatever you want with it. Yeah, so I think this covers actually a lot, maybe 90% of what a table needs, right? Especially this export to Excel feature. It's a really good practice to always ship your data tables with the export to Excel feature in case someone wants to do further data manipulation with it. Yeah, so I think uh, that's it for the table showcase. So as I said, today we'll be building up uh, everything. The functionality will be using something called 10 stack table. So this 10 stack table is a headless UI for building powerful table. So what does headless UI mean? Headless UI just means that they actually give you the functionality, but they do not give you any styles by default. So they give, they give you uh, things like uh, they give you things like uh, the sorting functionality, the searching functionality, right? You get to select. So all of this functionality is provided by 10 stack table. However, actually to show the table nicely in a nice CSS format, we'll be using ShadCN. Right, so ShadCN is a, a component library built on top of Tailwind CSS. So by comp and com by combining this 10 stack table uh, with the ShadCN uh, library, we can actually create this really functional and beautiful form. Right. So actually under, I'm actually pulling this tutorial from the ShadCN documentation itself on how to build a powerful data table built with 10 stack table. So today I'll just be walking you through this a whole tutorial and then I'll be explaining each functionality and each step along the way because uh, as a beginner you want to uh, learn the ins and outs of a library so I'll be explaining everything today yeah so let's get started so the first thing uh, to do is actually let's generate some mock data right so I'm gonna come to this website called Mockaroo so this website just basically gives you the ability to generate a mock data of any shape and you can have an array or any format you want so in this case, I'm gonna uh, try to, when you come first come to the website, it has already pre-filled with this kind of field. So like ID, first name, last name, email, gender. So I'm gonna keep all of that, except I'm gonna delete the IP address. I'm gonna add another field called uh, date of birth. Yeah, so in our table, we're gonna have a date of birth and this is gonna be a type of date. So you just type date, you can choose date time. We want it to be in the format of uh, ISO 8601. So th these are all just mock data. Uh, I mean, in production, you obviously be pulling this uh, list of data from a database or whatever source you want. So this is purely for demonstration. So for this, I'm just going to put it 2000, just for the sake of demonstration. And then I'm going to press the format, I'm going to choose JSON. I'm going to not include now values and I want it in terms of an array. So then I'm going to press um, generate data. So then it's going to give me a JSON object, a JSON array. So actually, let's come into our downloads folder. So if we come to the downloads, we can see that uh, it has provided us with a, a JSON object. It's just a list of values. I'm not sure if you can see it's a bit zoomed in, uh, zoomed out, but yeah, it basically provides us with the mock data. So actually, let's kickstart the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initiate initialize a new Next.js project. All right, so let's get started by initializing a new Next.js project. So I'm going to do that by doing npx uh, create next app at latest with a TypeScript flag. So I'm going to press enter. So we'll install the latest Next.js version and then let's call our project, just call it a uh, chat CN table. Uh, we want to use ESLint. 
we want Tailwind CSS, we're using the source directory. And of course, uh, we're going to be using the app router. So that's a new Next.js 13.4 feature. We will leave it as the default and we'll wait for the project to initialize and download. Okay, awesome. So it has been in initialized. So I'm going to just uh, CD into chat uh, CN table. table. And let's open up in VS Code by typing the code.command. Okay, so we have a new Next.js project here running. So the first thing I'm going to just do is, I'm going to do just npm run dev to make sure that everything is up and running. So it's running on localhost 3000. So let's open that in the browser. Okay, so we can see that the project is up and running. Right, so and if you go under the source directory, we have another app folder. So under the app folder, we have this page.tsx. So this page.tsx is actually is what, is what is being rendered in this page that we see right here. So I'm just going to delete the entire uh, UI. I'm going to just return a normal H1 that says, hello world. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to try to test uh, the Tailwind CSS text rate 600. So I'm just going to make, make sure everything is working. So if we go back here, we can see that the hello world is rendering. So we know that Tailwind CSS is working. Okay, so the next step here is, let's actually install a uh, shared CN. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come here and open a new terminal. And here I'm just going to write uh, mpx shared CN dash UI at latest, I'm going to do init. So we're going to initialize the chat CN component library. So let's wait for it. Well, so will you want to use TypeScript? We are using TypeScript. Uh, we're going to leave it at the default style. And we're going to choose a slate. And then we're going to, they're going to ask us where our global CSS file is. So to actually configure that, we have to first come here. So under our uh, slash source slash app, we have a global source CSS here, right? We actually want to delete this whole file first because we want to let chat CN actually handle the styling. So I'm going to delete this file and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to tell it it's located, uh, it's going to be located at source slash app slash globals dot CSS. Right, so my, my picture is here is blocking, but here it is. So the source slash app slash globals dot CSS. Okay, I'm going to press enter and then we're going to be using CSS variables. So press yes. And where's our tailwind config.js? So we can see that it actually lives here at the base directory. So we can just leave it as the default. And then lastly, uh, what I want to do the import alias to be. So we're going to leave it as default also. And then the import alias for utilities, default also. And we'll be using React server components. So press yes. So it's asking whether we want to write the configurations to components.json. So it's just a, a JSON file that contains all the shared uh configurations. We can press yes to that. So then a uh, shared scene is going to do its magic and it's going to in initialize the components for us. So if we come down here, we can see now that we have a components.json and this contains all our uh, all our shared scene uh, configurations. Okay, so perfect. So let's try to actually install the shared scene button first uh, so that we can test that it's working. So under my terminal, I'm just going to come here and I'm going to type. Uh, to install a component, we must... So. To install a shadcn component, we do mpx shadcn at latest at button. So whenever you want to use a component by shadcn, right, you have to come down and manually install it, right. So we press add button, and then it's gonna ask us whether we want to download it. So we're gonna press yes. So let's see what where it actually downloaded it to. So we come down to our, our directory. We can see that under slash source, we have a new co uh, components. Under the components, there's a folder called UI. In the UI, there's a button here. So this is the shared CN component, right? It's using class variance authority. We will not need to touch this file. We just know that it exists and that we can import and use it. So how do we actually use it? Let's come back to our page.tsx and then we're going to, instead of returning this, we're going to return a button, right? So this button, we can see that it's imported from component slash UI slash button, right? And then we're going to say, hello. Okay, let's save that. We can see that, yes, the hello is working and we can see the button here. So this is a shared CN button. So excellent, so we have we are doing great, so we have initialized chat CN. Okay, the next step is to actually import the data. So remember the mock data just now? Let's actually import it within our file. So under source, I'm going to create a new file called uh, people.ts. So this is going to store our data. And so actually, where do we get our data from? So if you come down to the downloaded, uh, downloaded file here, I'm just going to co command A to copy everything, command C to copy. I'm going to just uh, do const data equals to I'm going to paste it in. So I'm going to save it. So I'm going to use the auto formatter. So my editor has some auto formatting. So it's going to format the JSON nicely see for me. So if you scroll all the way up here, we can see that this is the data that Mockeroo actually generated for us. So they gave us an array. So each array has a person, which is, has the ID, first name, last name, email, 
gender and also date of birth in the format of a ISO timestamp. Okay, so we have about, let's see, we have 1000 of this. Yeah, so up, up to one ID of 1000. So we have imported the data. Let's now create actually a person type. So to cr create a type of the for the person, we're going to do uh, type person equals to so we can either manually type it out like id number or we can actually uh, let typescript infer it in itself so we can do type person equals to type of p uh, data right and then we index into number so what this does is we when we do type of data you return us with an array so you see all these fields are automatically uh, inferred by typescript and then because this is an array, we need to index into it with a number. So in the end, this type person, if you hover over it, we can see that it gives us we can see that it gives us the correct type for the person. So we can use TypeScript to actually automatically generate the type for this. I'm gonna rename this data to actually people, right? So I'm gonna come down here, rename it to people. And then I'm gonna export both of this. So I'm gonna export the type and also gonna export the data people. Yeah. So now in other files like in our data in a data table, we can actually import this uh, mock data. So ideally this it will actually come from a database that you have, but this is, this is just for a demonstration. Okay, so now that we have this table, we can actually start with the data. We can actually start initializing the table uh, components. So I'm going to close this file. I'm going to come back to... I'm going to come back to the shared CN documentation and we're going to see what we need to do. So, basically, let's just look at the introduction and the motivation behind why we are doing this. So... Every data table or data grid I've created has been unique. They all behave differently and have specific sorting and filtering requirements and work with different data source. It doesn't make sense to combine all of these variations into a single component, right? If we do that, we lose the flexibility that headless UI provides. Meaning what it's trying to say is that a lot all these tables that we have created throughout our careers are going to be different, right? Some data, same, some tables require different things. Some data require sorting, some data requires filtering. And it doesn't make sense to lump all of these functionalities into one single hard-coded component. So what uh, Shad CN and React tables provide us with is that component, uh, this component style functionality where you can just drop in whatever functionality you need. So if you need a sorting functionality, you add that in. And if you need a filtering functionality, you add that in. If you do not need all of this functionality, you just have, don't have to add it in. And you can just use the default table layout to just display your table without needing any other functionality. So we're going to go through a lot of things. We're going to be going through how to set up basic table. We're going to show you how to do row actions, pagination, sorting, filtering, and visibility, and row selection. So actually to initialize the installation, let's first uh, add the table component by Shad CN. So I'm going to copy the command here. I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to install it. So I'm going to do npx chat cn at ui latest at table. Okay, so then I'm going to run it. So I'm going to install it by pressing yes. Okay, so proceed. So it has added a table in here. So if you come down to the directory, we can see that under the UI folder, a new table.tsx has been created by chat cn. And this basically create, uh, this handles all the table definition, table CSS by chat cn. Okay, so uh, let's come back here. So other than that, we also need the 10 stack React table. So this React table, remember, is the headless UI that I was talking about just now. So you can install this uh, com this library also. So come back here and just do npm install at 10 stack slash React table. Okay, so while it's inst installing, installing, let us just look at the prerequisites. So for them, they're going to build a table to show recent payments. For us, we're going to build a table to showcase the people. So we can see that we have already done the first step. So they define a type for the payment and they have also exported a data payments table. So this is the data source that they're talking about. So next, we're going to be starting by creating the following folder structure. So under app, we're going to have a folder called payments and we have three different things. The columns uh, file, the data table file, and the page file. So the columns of TSX will actually contain our column definitions. So in this case, if you come back to our definitions for our data, uh, people.ts, we can see that we have a bunch of columns, right? We have ID column, first name column, last name column. We need to explicitly tell React table what it contains. Therefore, we have a columns table, a columns file. And then we have a data table file, and this will actually contain our actual data table component where we actually re render out the entire table. And lastly, this page.tsx is just uh, the page for, to actually put the data table in. So this data table is the component, 
right? And then the page will actually render the component. So let's create this table uh, layout. So under app, I'm going to create a new uh, folder called people. And then under people, I'm going to create a, a file called page.tsx. So here, I'm just going to do tsrafc. So this is a snippet that stands for a TypeScript React Arrow Function uh, Export Component. So it's going to generate this nice component for me. I'm going to just enable it as people. So I'm going to save the file. So because of Next.js 13.4, so any folder that has contains a page or DSX will automatically map to the URL. So if we come back to our to our browser and we come to slash people, right, we can see that this a uh, page is actually being rendered by this component, this page or DSX here. So if we name it to hello again, we can see that it automatically updates here and the for the URL will be slash people. So this slash people comes from this people folder here. So under these people, I'm going to also create the columns, the TS, TS. And then for under another thing I'm going to create is the data-table.tsx. Okay, so I'm going to just TSRAFC. I'm going to do people data table. Okay, so this is going to be the component. And then for our columns, let's actually define the columns. So if we go back to the if we go back to the documentation, we can see the first step is to define the columns. So if you come down to the first step, we can see that we have to define the columns, right? So the, under the columns of TSX, we're gonna first import this column definition function from TSX table. So I'm gonna come here and go import this. So how do we actually define the columns for our people? So let's just export a constant called columns. So these columns will be a column def, right? So this column def is from React table which has a type of person. So this person, we can import it from this add people. So remember, this is the the, ex the type that we have exported out from the data file. So we can basically tell this thing that it, this is going to be a columns and the columns are going to follow the type of person, right? And then it's going to be, of course, an array of columns. So let's just export the array. So the how do you actually define the... The easiest way to define is to first give it a header, a header of, let's say, ID. And then we'll have a accessor, accessor key of ID. So if you can see that, uh, if we press control and space, we can see there's some auto intelligence. So this is coming from TypeScript. Because we have told TypeScript that this is a person's uh, column, we can now access all the com attributes that the person will have. So the person will have ID. So this header is actually what is shown. So if you come back to the example, so if you come here, you can see that this person ID, this title, is what's reflected by this header. So we can name it anything we want. So this will be, let's say, person ID, right? The accessor key, this will be, is what is used to actually access into the data source, into the ID field. So this ID will actually have to correctly match the, will actually have to match this ID here. Okay, so let's fill up the rest of the, the fields. So other than person ID, what do we have? We have a first name, and then the accessor key will be, of course, first name. So we can see that TypeScript is giving us some autocomplete, right? So I'm going to continue on. So we have a header of, let's say, last name. The accessor key is going to be last, the underscore name. So we can see that if we press control space again, we can choose the correct attributes. So TypeScript gives us that type safety so that we don't actually uh, mess up when defining our columns. Then we have a header of, let's say, let's look at what we have, right? So we have a uh, last name, we have email, gender, and date of birth. So I'm gonna have a email, email. The accessor key is gonna be email, and then we have a header of gender, and then accessor key of gender, and lastly we have a header of uh, dates. Let's say dates of birth, and then we have a accessor key of date of birth. So with that, we have actually defined our column. So we have told React Table what kind of columns exist for a table. That's good. So now we can uh, we can actually go on to the next step. So I'm gonna save the file, I'm gonna delete everything. So I'm gonna come back to our data table component. So first we have to make this into a client component, right? And then let's actually follow the instructions on what they want. So first let's import all these four things from uh, React Table. So I'll explain it on the way as as we use the files what it means. So we have the column dev already. This has been explained. So flex render, get core model, and use React Table. So this use React Table is the key to React Table API. 
So this use React table will actually uh, return us with a table object which we can then use to actually map out all our rows and headers. So let's come down here. Let's also import the actual uh, CSS components from ShadCN table. So I want you to notice the difference here. So this 10 stack table, it gives us the backend uh, headless functionality to define our tables and the data that it will contain. And also gives us the functionality like sorting and uh, filtering. However, this component slash UI slash table, this is by ChatCN, and this gives us a style to build on top of the React table. So this is just something that we want to note here. So let's also come back here. So let's gonna we're gonna define, we're gonna basically export a component called data table, right? So here we can see that we are trying to export this people data table. But what do we actually tell them what the props are? So I'm gonna just copy this interface. So uh, copy down here. Okay, so let's go through what it means. So this will take in a generic of a t table data and table value. So we're just gonna tell data table that we're gonna be expecting two things. We need the columns and we also need the data. So these columns basically tell our data table like what kind of columns will this table expect. And this data will be the actual data that we want to map through in the table. So let's also change this. All right, so we're gonna be exporting this function data table. So it's gonna, exp uh, it's gonna have a generic of like, so I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna just uh, do, we're gonna export a function, right? The function, this is gonna react component. So it's gonna be, it's called people uh, data table, right? It's gonna take in a generic of t data and t uh, value, right? And then what it's gonna expect, it's gonna just take in the uh, data table props, right? And then this data table props will take in the t data and t value t data and t value so we can see that we can actually destructure uh two things the columns and the actual data so these columns and data will come from this uh, props columns and data so these columns and data will uh, will have the t data and t value uh, column definition so if you remember this column def this will come from our columns uh dot tx ts right because we already defined this columns thing here so when we come to the data table later we'll pass in the columns uh, from this columns dot ts and this data here so let's look at what's the next step. The next step is to actually define the table itself, right? So const table equals to use react table, right? This react table is gonna take, thing, uh, take in a few configuration. So uh, it's gonna take in an object. So first the thing is, it's gonna take in the data, take in data. So this data will actually come from the props here. Secondly, it's gonna need the columns. So we're telling react table what kind of columns it expects. And lastly, we want this get uh, core row model equals to get core row model invoke the function here. So this use react table will take in a bunch of configuration and with this table object we can actually uh, call this table object will contain all the values and all the headers and all the functions we can call on this table to give it that sorting functionality and all the other functionalities. So the next thing we must important thing we must understand about react tables is what does a model mean within a react within react table? So a model within React table, you can imagine it as like a configuration. So each functionality has its own configuration. So let's say I have different functions like uh, filtering, sorting, searching. So each of these are composable, composable components, and each of these composable components will each need will each need their own configuration objects. So let's say for for filtering. I need to tell it how do I actually filter, how do I actually sort the table, how do I actually select the table. So for each of these functionality, it needs a, a model. So a model, you can think of it, it's just a configuration. So when we say that get core row model, so this is the base. So just to display the rows, right? To display the rows, we must have a default configurations on how a React table actually handles the displaying of this uh, of these rows. So that's why we pass in this get core row model. We're just telling it the default uh, configuration for displaying the data. So in, in the future, we can have also like, uh, if you, so we can see that it will also have a, we can also pass in a get filtered row model, right? So it's telling, we can, when we add this functionality in, we tell React table, what kind of the configuration do we want for a filtering functionality? So if we don't add that this configuration in, it doesn't know how to filter. Only when we add in the filtering model, then you will know that, oh, I have this new configuration for filtering and therefore I can use this filtering functionality in my table. So for now, we just want to display the, the rows. So we just pass in the get core row model. Okay, so let's actually now uh, display the table. So we can see that it's a big uh, junk of JSX, but it's okay, I'll write it out with you guys. 
Okay, so let's now actually write out the JSX. So we need to return, uh, let's just return a wrapping div first. So we'll have a div with a class name of a rounded dash medium and a border. Okay, and then now let's actually display the Shatsian table. So the table here is just purely CSS. So for the table, we have a table header, right? And the table header, let's show the tables. So remember that we have, we got this table object from this use react table. So if you actually index in, let's look at what functions it gives. So table dot get header groups, right? So it will return us with a header groups. So a header group is like, you can actually imagine there might be multiple header groups. So let's say on top of here, I can have another header group. So because a uh, React table gives us that headless UI, headless functionality, we must actually loop through all the headers ourselves and display it. So we can first do table.get header groups. Then for each header group, so we do map dot each header group, what we do want to return? We actually want to return a table row. So the table row is going to have a key of header group dot id right table table row so for each of the header group we have to map through the headers again so header uh, group dot headers dot map so for each header what do we actually want to return we just want to return a table head right table sorry table head right with the key of header.id okay so for each of the table head let's actually uh choose the flex render so we want to render the header right so you can remember here we actually imported this flex render so this flex render is a utility function from uh from react table that just gives us a very nice way to actually render out our cells and headers so we're gonna do flex uh, render so we need two things right the first thing we need is the header dot column column dot column uh, dev dot header itself and then the second thing would be header dot get context yeah so this is just the reactable way of uh, showing this header so i'm gonna save this right and then i'm gonna come back to the thing here and then we can now see so actually we have not actually uh shown this here we're just defining the jsx but later after we finish this component we'll be able to see it in action so here we have already defined the table head. So let's actually, after the table header, so under this table, we have the table head, right? Okay, then after the table head, after we have defined the table uh, headers, let's actually define the table body. So this is gonna be the body of the table. So first we're gonna do uh, table.getRowModel. So remember this row model is actually the configuration to actually display all the rows. So we're gonna do get row model dot rows right so if the rows dot length exists meaning that uh, we have data within the rows because if we don't have data within the rows we want to display a message to show that oh there's no rows to actually render so if there's a length what well, we're gonna display uh we're gonna display all the rows but if there is no rows we're just gonna display uh, just a normal table row that just shows that that just shows a table row we just want to show that we have a table cell table cell let's just show that there's no rows no no results okay but if there are rows right let's actually map through the rows so we'll then do table dot get row model model dot rows dot map so for each row right let's return a table row so within the table row let's give you a key of a row dot id and then we have also a row dot get visible cells. So we have a row, right? A row will contain like person name, first name, ID, last name. So for each of the visible cells, we actually want to uh, map through the cell. And for each of the cell, we actually want to display the table cell, right? So we'll do t uh, return a table cell, right? The table cell with a key of cell dot ID. And then within the table cell, let's actually uh, do the flex render again. So flex render, so we want to get the cell dot column dot column ref dot cell, and we want to cell dot get context. So this is just the way that they did. So this will be cell dot column dot column def definition here dot cell. Okay, so let's save that. So what we did here was actually here. So this table, let's just uh, here. 
Okay. So let's just walk through what we did here. So we define a table. So we have the table head. So this table head will define the headers of the table. So first we get all the header groups. For each of the header group, we map through and map through each header group to get the header and we return a table head. And then we just basically showed the head header with the flex render method. Then for the table body, we did something very similar. So we get the rows of all the table and then we just map through for each row. We did the get uh, visible cells and then for each cells, we just map into a table cell. And then we use the flex render method from React Table to actually display the cell. Okay, so now that we have this, let's actually uh, render the table. Okay, so we can see our results. So let's go under page.tsx under people. So here we can actually uh, uh, display the table. So I'm going to return the uh, person people data table, right? So we import it from a dot slash data table. So this needs a few things. It needs the columns and the data. So where do we get the columns? So we can get the columns by getting it from the dot slash columns or txx. So if you remember, we actually define all our columns, column depth, and then we're passing it into this data table now. For the data, we can actually pass in the people, uh, people that we can import from the mock data. So this comes from our uh, mock data people, right? So it's all this, this whole big array. So let's save this file, and then let's see if it actually works. So if we go and refresh it, let's wait for a while. Okay, we can see that it actually renders. So I'm going to just zoom out a little. Yeah, we can see that it renders. So right now it looks a bit off, right? Because there's something wrong with this data table. And that's my mistake, right? So this should actually be table header, not table head. So I'm going to save that again. And then we can come back here and we can see that it displays perfectly. So we just basically map through each table, uh, each cell and each row, and we display the head, person ID, first name, last name, email, gender, and date of birth. Okay, so now let's actually improve on this, right? So actually before that, let me just show you. What if we pass in an empty array? So this data is of people, we're going to pass in an empty array. So by right, if we pass in an empty array, let's guess what happens. We're going to see that basically there won't be any, uh, there won't be any rows, right? Because the rows.length will be zero. So it's going to show no results. So if we come back here and we can see that, correct, it will show no results. So that's just why we added this part here, just so that we can see the result of our efforts. So I'm going to go back here and just add people. So we can see that it will render again. Okay, so the next step is, let's look at how we can format this cell a little nicer. So we can see that right now, since date of birth, this is not very human readable. Because it's in an ISO timestamp, we want to display in this, um, make it more human readable. So we want to showcase like, oh, it's a uh, June, uh, December of 26 or something like that. We just don't want it to show it. So how do we actually do custom cell formatting within our React table? So if you come back to our, our code, if you come back to our columns.txx, so this is where we define all our columns and the, the cell formatting. So if we come back to date of birth, right, we can actually go and define. So for this date of birth, we can actually take in another function called cell. So this cell, we can actually uh, get a uh, return of function. So this function, will, we can take in, we can destructure the actual, uh, the row from it. So let's just get the, the, so this cell, whatever it returns from this cell, this function will be called to actually render out this cell here. So if I just uh, return a plain string like hello world, let's just save it. We can see that, so we can see that when we do this uh, cell and we return the hello world, we can see that it actually throws an error. So the error is telling us that functions cannot be passed directly to client components. Meaning, right now this columns on TS is a server file, meaning that this runs on the server. However, this data table runs on the client. So to actually uh, let, let this function run on the client, we need to come up here and pass in the use client directive to tell this columns on TS that we allow it to run on the client. So let's refresh it. And then now we can see, you see this date of birth, now it returns hello world instead. So whatever, func whatever uh, this function returns, is going to be formatted into this hello world. So now right now we actually want to uh, return, we want to return a formatted date such that uh, we can format this date, right? So how do we actually get access to that? So as we have shown here, we can actually get access to this row. So let's just get uh, the actual data, date from of birth here. So we get date of birth equals to row dot get value. So this row has a function called get value. It will, uh, we can just pass in the date of birth attribute and then it will get us this date of birth. So it allows us to get the date of birth and then let's format it. So let's do const formatted equals to new, uh, new date, right? We're going to pass in the date of birth 
and then we're gonna call dot to locale date string. So this will just return a nice human readable string. So in this case, this day of birth. So right now, this day of birth could be now. That's why it's throwing this error. But we're just gonna tell TypeScript that this will definitely exist. So do a string, right? So this will solve the error. And then we just want to return a, a div from here, right? So let's just return a div called formatted, right? And it's gonna just continue here. And then here we're gonna give it a class name, a class name of just a uh, font medium, right? Okay. So the reason right now why it's throwing error is because this is JSX and we're, we are trying to write JSX within a TS file. So the actual mistake here is we have to convert this into a .tsx file so that we tell TypeScript that yes, we are we allow a JavaScript uh, XML in here so that we can actually write some uh, divs here. I'm going to save the file again and then I'm going to refresh. So right now it's saying that uh, we can't read from columns.ts so of course we must come in here and let's uh, do from dot slash columns dot tsx so we just need to update the server okay so after updating the server we can see that now the date of birth of correctly formats into a nice human readable string so 30 slash 11 slash 202 so we can see the power of a uh, react table so within the column definition we can actually define the formatted cell value and we can get access to the actual row and then we can get a date of birth and then we just format it and we return whatever diff we want we can even style it however we want okay awesome so now the next step is let's let's add this uh this action things. So how do we actually give uh add this this button such that when we click on it, there's a drop down menu and we can uh, do whatever action we want here. So what we can do here is I'm gonna come back to my column definition. So after this uh date of birth value, I'm gonna add another column, right? This column I'm gonna name it ID of action. So this action doesn't actually uh, access anything, but we want to return a cell. So remember this uh, cell function. So this cell, cell function will actually return whatever uh, JSX that we want to display here. So why not we can just return another uh, a function. So for this cell, we can actually just return, let's say we return um, a button from button from UI, uh, from ChatCN and say, hello, hi. So let me save that and let's come back here. We're gonna refresh the page and we can see, now there's this hi here, this hi. So we have an additional uh, column here and then we can, for this column, we can actually uh, define the drop down menu here. So let's actually get the drop down menu. So I'm going to come and install the drop down menu component from ChatCN. So I'm going to do mpx chatcn uh, ui at latest at drop down menu. So I'm going to install this uh, component. Press yes. So while that's installing, let's actually take a look at uh, how do we actually do the actions. So if we scroll down here, we can see that uh, to get the update column definition, to get the row actions, we can actually add a drop down component. So we're gonna just copy what we're doing here. So after we have uh, actually installed the drop down menu, we're gonna import the button from our columns. So we're gonna import the drop down menu component. So we'll come up all the way here, we're gonna import the drop down menu that we have installed. And then under here, we can see that they also action added an action column. So they're gonna get the row and then they're gonna get the payment. So in this case, uh, instead of getting the payment, we're going to just access the row attribute here. And because we just want to let them copy, we want them to uh, copy the person person name here. So we're going to just do, um, we're going to get the person. So to get the person, we can do get row.original. So this will actually return us with the original row. And then to get the person ID, we can just do const person uh, ID equals to person dot ID. So we can see that in the TypeScript also gives us the type annotations for what the original row is like. And then instead of returning the button, we can return a drop down menu. So let's just return a drop uh, down menu. So within the drop down menu, we have a drop down menu trigger. We can pass in the as, as child prop here. So we want to have a button, right? This button is gonna have a variant of ghost. And then the uh, uh, class name of width dash eight, height dash eight, and padding of zero. And then in here, I'm gonna just have a more horizontal. So I'm gonna import a logo icon from Lucid dash React. And then this uh, icon will have a class name of height dash four and width dash four, width dash four. Okay. And then under the drop down menu trigger, we we'll have the actual drop down menu content. Okay, uh, 
So this drop down menu content, it will contain the actual a uh, list of actions that we want. So we'll have first a uh, drop down menu label that says actions. Under the actions, we have the uh, item drop down menu item, right? Let's just do uh copy person name. So on click when we when they click on this button, we actually want to copy the name to their clipboard. So in order to do that, we can actually uh, call this function called uh, navigator. So this navigator is from the HTML window API. We can get the navigator dot clipboard dot write text. We can take the person ID and just basically copy it to their clipboard, right? So this person ID obviously comes from here. Person ID. So they because they expect a string, we're gonna do a uh, to string. Okay, so we have just faced a new error. So this is a, I, I believe this is an XGS 13.4 with chat scene error. So after doing some uh, googling, so this is a really recent error, so August 8, right? So all we need to do is, because Lucid React has some dependency issue with NextJS, so we're going to uh, install this a new version of Lucid React. So we're just going to do npm install at 0.263.1. So I think in the future, once they actually fix this dependency, you shouldn't have this error, uh, depending on when you're actually doing this tutorial. But in this case, I'm gonna just do that. I'm gonna re restart the server. I'm gonna hope, uh, hope that the actual uh, icon will be resolved properly. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna uh, refresh the page. Okay, so uh, downgrading that Lucid icon package worked. So we can see now that we have a new drop down menu. So we can see this button uh, corresponds to this uh, drop down button that we have defined here. So this icon also corresponds here. So when we click on it, we can copy the person's name. So this function will be called to copy it, uh, copy the person ID. So if you actually come down and uh, paste it, we can see that it copies the ID of one. So we can change it to anyone. So if we don't need to be copying the person ID, we can actually just directly copy a person dot uh, first name. So we can copy the person's name and we copy to our clipboard here, the first name. So this just corresponds to whatever we want to copy here. So it's all up to you. So I mean with this functionality, you can even add like a, a delete functionality so that you can, uh, if you want to delete it from your database, you can take the person's ID and then make a backend API call to delete uh, based on the ID. Okay, so we're doing great. Now let's add pagination to our table. So if you see in our original example, we have uh, a pagination, so the next and previous. So so we'll come back to our uh, our data table here. So other than, remember when we said that we have this model, so a model is like a functionality and a configuration. So when we want to add a pagination functionality, we can actually have pass in a get a pagination row model, and we pass in the get pagination row model, we import it, from a React table, right? Get pagination role model, and then we invoke it. So now we basically uh, added this pagination functionality here. Okay, and then uh, all we need to do now is uh, we want to add the pagination controls. So we scroll down uh, under the table here. So when we return, let's just add an additional div uh, just to wrap the entire table. So I'm gonna collapse this. I'm gonna copy the div down here. So this div will be for the table. And then for here, we have another div for just the pagination. So I'm going to format this. So for the pagination, we have a div uh, with the class name of flex items center, justify uh, start, space uh, dash x dash 2, and also a padding y of 4. And then under this pagination, uh, let's actually add the two buttons to actually go to the previous and next page. So the first button, is gonna have a variant. So let's import the button from ShadCN first. We have a variant of outline and then size of a small, so a small button. And when we click on it, what do we actually want it to do? We want it to go to the next page, right? So actually the table variable, so this table uh, that we got back from a uh, use react table. So this table has a function called uh, table.previous page. So if you invoke this, it will actually bring us to the previous page. And we actually want to disable this button, right? Uh, disable it goes to table dot uh, get can previous page. So uh, let's just negate that. So what it does is, if uh, this get can previous page returns a boolean, so it's basically asking whether this table has a previous page. So if it doesn't have a previous page, obviously you want to disable the button because if there's no previous page, it doesn't make sense to allow the users to click on the button to go back to the previous. 
So under the button, we're gonna just uh, press previous. So I'm gonna save the file. So let's go back here and we can see now we have this previous and it's disabled now because there's no previous page because we are on the first page. So now let's do the same and add the button for the next page. So actually we can copy the functionality. I'm gonna copy this button down. I'm gonna paste it down here. So instead of uh, dot previous page, we can do dot next page. And then uh, for instead of disabling it when there's no previous page, we disable it when there is no uh, next page. And I'm gonna change it here to uh, next. Let's save the file. And we go back here and then we have this next. So we can see that, look, look at this beautiful functionality. With just a few lines of code and few uh, models, we can do this uh, pagination for free. And it's just incredible how easy it is to do pagination with a uh, React table. Okay, so now that we have this pagination, let's also add a sorting functionality. So let's make this, uh, let's make the person ID uh, name, person ID feel sortable. So if we come back here to the example, we can see that we actually made this date of birth sortable. So we can either sort by ascending or descending. But for this example, I'm going to make this uh, person ID sortable so we can see a new example. So because sorting is a new functionality, so whenever we want to add a functionality to React table, we must actually add a new model to the React table, right? So I, I, I hope that you start to get the idea of what a model actually does. So we can do get a sorted row model equals to get sorted a row model, we import it from React table, we invoke it. So by adding this line, we are telling React table, now we want to add a sorting functionality to it. Okay. And then with this, we actually want to define a state. So this state will actually hold whether uh, which columns uh, are, being f are being sorted right now. So this will just be a normal React state. So we'll do cons uh, sorting and set sorting uh, equals to a normal react.use state. And then uh, for the type arguments, so it's going to be an array. The type arguments is going to be a sorting state that we import from React table. So React table gives us this sorting state type and we're going to basically store it in this state. And then under the React table, we're going to pass in another uh, uh, configuration. We're going to pass in the state. So for this state, we're going to pass in uh, the sorting state. It's going to be uh, mapped to this sorting here. here. So I'm going to add this column here. Okay, so what we have done is we have defined a sorting state within our uh, component and then we told a React table to use that state while it's sorting. And then we just want to have another uh, function, another configuration. So on sorting change, so whenever we click a button to actually flip the sort, we actually want to uh, set the sorting uh, to be a different state, right? So that's why we did on sorting change, we pass in our own set sorting. So it's going to set the sorting, it's going to update the array. And then when it updates the array, the state will change and then it will be passed into this uh, React state and then it can just do its own sorting rendering again. So I hope you can see how the actual model comes in and uh, let it render the state. So after having this sorting functionality, we still haven't had any UI change. Because remember, React table gives us the functionality but does not give us the UI to actually do the sorting. So let's actually make the uh, ID sortable. So let's come back to our columns definition. Okay, so for the for the ID field, we'll make this sortable. So we can actually, uh, this person ID field, right? Instead of passing in just a normal uh, uh, string, we can pass in another, we can pass in a function. So this function actually will give us the header. We can destructure the header from it. And we want to return a button. Uh, so that when we click on the button, it will sort uh, either uh, ascending or descending. So we'll return a button, a button, right? So uh, we'll just give it a styling of variance of ghost. And then on click, so what do we want to do when we click on the header, right? So in our original example, when we click on the header, so this this is the button, right? When we click on the header, we want to toggle the sort. So how do we toggle the sort? We actually want to do, uh, on click, we want to do column. So this column comes from uh, here, this uh, variable. So we actually want to destructure the header. We actually want to destructure the column because this column gives us a function called dot toggle sorting. So we want to toggle sorting. What do we actually toggle it to? We're, we're going to get the current sorting state. So we take column dot get is sorted, right? Whether it is equals to ascending, right? So this will return a Boolean. And then basically we just set the toggle sorting to either true or false so that it can go either ascending or descending. And then for this button inside here, we're just gonna do uh, the person ID and then we'll pass in another icon just right beside it called the uh, person 
ID, arrow up down icon, and let us style it. So we have a styling of let's say margin left of two and height of four and width of four. So let us save that and let's come back to our thing here. So we can see now the button shows, right? So this person ID and then the icon here. So when we click on this button, it should toggle the sorting to either ascending or descending. So let's try that. So we click on the function, we can see that it does the sorting. So we can see that originally it starts from 1 all the way up to 1000. When we click on it, it now does descending sorting. So it starts from 1000 down all the way down to 1. So with just that simple functionality, a uh, simple uh, model, sorting model, we can create this ascending and descending functionality. Okay, so now let's also add a filtering thing. So in our original example, we can filter by first name, right? So let's, uh, let's add that functionality within our table right here. So as always, because this is a new functionality, so I think we have done it so many times, we need to add a new model to it. So the model we want to do is the get uh, filtered uh, row model. We can do get filtered row model, imported it from a React table up here. So this is a model is just a new feature. So now we are telling we're telling React Table. Now we have a new functionality where we can filter it. Okay, and then we have we want to maintain another state. So other than the sorting state, we want to maintain the column filter state. So we can just do a uh, cons column filters and set column filters equals to React dot use state. Right. So this will have a generic type of uh, column uh, filter state, which we can import from React Table. Right, so this is just gonna be a normal array here, normal array, and then under this state here, we want to pass in the state, right? So we're telling the field, the t React table, what the column filter state is. So pass in column, uh, filter filters, and then basically, on column filter change, on column filter change, we want to do the set column filters. So this is very similar to the sorting state, right? So we what we're trying to do is that. Whenever we click on a button to actually call the column filter, when we change the column filters, like when we are filtering through a column, we want it to, to update the local state here. So set column filters and update this array. And when this array is being updated, the column filters update. And then this uh, internal React table state will change. And then you can, we can render it differently. And basically we do the filtering effect. Okay. And then now also let's add an uh, input, right? So we add an input to allow them to actually type in the filtering state. So to get the input, I'm going to just do npx shad cn ui at input. Right, so this input comes from shad cn. We have to install that component. So press yes to install. And I'm going to come down here to just below the first div. So we'll now have a second div. So this is for the input. So this div is going to have a class name of flex items center and padding y of 4. Within that div, let us have the input, which we uh, input which we can import from ShadCN uh, here at components. So it's a self-closing component. We have a placeholder that says uh, filter uh, first names. Okay, and then we'll have the value. So the value of the input is going to be table, table.get column. So we can get the column of the first name attribute, right? And then we'll pass in .get filter value here. Right, so yeah, so the value will actually be this. So if this doesn't exist, we'll pass in uh, just an empty string here. So here we'll just tell it that this is gonna be a string. So the value will match because the input value expects a string. So this table dot get column will get the actual like filter value. So whatever we enter, uh, whatever we enter here, this is the filter value, right? So this is the get filter value. So if that doesn't exist, we enter uh normal uh return an empty string. So whenever we change, whenever we change the input, so when we type in the input, we actually want to set the filter value to change, right? So we'll just get the event from it. And then we just want to do table.get column, first name again. But this time, instead of getting the filter value, we want to set the filter value to be e.target.value. So this will just uh, do the control form thing in React and also update the filter value states within React table. Okay, and then we'll just uh, give you a class name of just a max width of SM, just make it look nicer. So let's go back here to this example, and we can see that now we have a filter, and when we type on it, we can see that the first name is now being filtered. And if we enter like, let's say this wheeler person, so wheeler, 
we can see that it shows up here. So with just that uh, uh, small functionality of setting the filter value and updating the state up here, we can see that just by the, the model, we can add the sorting functionality, the, the filtering functionality really easily. Okay, so now let's actually add this columns thing. So we want to be able to hide the columns, right? So uh, we want to give this uh, button, this menu item, so that when we open this menu, we can choose which columns we want to hide. So how do we actually add that here? So let's come back to the code. So so that the, the hiding of the column visibility, we can actually uh, do a state for that. So let's just declare a new state called cons uh, column uh, cons column visibility and set column visibility equals to react dot use state right. It's gonna be an object, and then the type is gonna be the visibility visibility state, which can import from React table itself. So we have this state, and then we just want to tell React table uh, to set the state. So here we have on column visibility change on column visibility change we want to set column visibility so we pass in the state we bind react tables internal state to our own state and then here we can also pass in the column uh, visibility state here so this will uh, correspond to the internal state for the which columns are visible and then with that let's actually add the ui to actually show the menu on which columns to hide and show so just under this, uh, just under this input view, right? So before the first div closing here, let us add a drop down menu. So drop down menu. Let's just import from the components UI. So under the drop down menu, we'll have the drop down menu trigger. We can import from the components. Within that, let us put a button, right, and a variant of outline. And then inside the button, let us do columns. And then we have a class name of margin left of auto. So we push it all the way to the right. So then under the drop down, drop down menu trigger, we have the drop down menu content. So we can import it from the components itself. Sorry, drop down menu content here. Then within the content, let us just align it to the end to the end and then insert here we can actually get all the columns right because we are trying to display uh if you see the example we are trying to display all the columns here so how do we get all the columns we can get it from the table dot uh gets all columns function uh then let's do a filter so we want to filter out those uh columns that that can hide so columns we return column dot get can hide so because some columns we want it to so some columns we actually don't want it, them to even hide it so certain columns like let's say this action uh this action column right we don't want them to be able to hide this column at all because certain columns we can't hide like we do not want them to hide this uh call this actions column so we actually want to get all the columns that are able to be hide, hidden and then after getting these columns we can actually map through the columns so these columns will be able to be hidden so for each column, let us uh, return uh, the drop drop down menu checkbox item from our own UI component. And then within that, let us uh, pass in the key of column.id and then the class name of capitalize. So we capitalize all the items inside. And then within it, let us just return the column.id. Okay, so the last thing we need to add here is, uh, let's just pass in whether it's checked. So we want to control, we want to make this checkbox a controlled checkbox. So we do uh, column dot get is uh, visible. So this is got get is visible will be from this column. So where if it's a visible column, we want to show that it's uh, checked. So if it's not visible, then we don't want it to be shown as checked. So as we can see here. So because all of these columns are visible, we can see there's a check mark here. But if it's not visible, we don't want to show a check mark be be before that. So then we want to do on checked uh, change. So whenever we click on the actual item, we get the value. And then we just want to do column dot toggle visibility. We pass in uh, not not value. So this basically does uh, convert this value into a boolean. Yeah. So the error here is because it has a implicitly any type, we just put this as boolean. 
just for the sake of it. So, with this on check change, if we come back here uh, to this, we can now see that there's a new columns. So when we click on it, we can actually toggle uh, whichever columns we want to change, whichever columns we would want to show, right? Yeah, so I think we are doing well. The last few steps is we want to add this uh this select thing. So we can either select all the columns or we can select certain columns, right? Then we can see under here we can have, uh, see how many rows we have selected. So if you select all the rows here, we can see that 12 rows have been selected. Yeah, so let's actually add the, the checkbox feature. So let's come back to the columns definition. So we can see that this, uh, this checkbox here is a new column by itself. So we can actually come here and add another column. So this is going to be the first column. So this column will have just the ID of select the checkbox, right? And the header, we're going to just take the table. So destructure the table within the header. And then we can just uh, do checkbox. So the header, this header thing, uh, is going to be this but this checkbox here. And this checkbox will allow it to either select all the columns or deselect all the columns here. So let's get the checkbox from uh, Shatsian. So do mpx Shatsian dash UI at checkbox. So we'll install it. So when we click on this header checkbox, we want to everything to be checked. So this is a special checkbox here. So first, let's import this checkbox from the components. And we'll just do uh, what is checked. So it is checked. Uh, sorry, let, is it important? OK, so it is checked when uh, table dot gets is all page uh, rows selected. So if all the whole row is selected, then the checkbox here will be checked, right? And then on check change, so when we actually click on the button on check change, what do we actually want to do? We want to get the value from the check change. And we just want to set all the, we want to toggle all the rows to be selected. So we do table dot toggle all page rows uh, selected and we want to negate the value. So this uh, double exclamation mark will just make it into a boolean. So whenever we check the box, the check the box, we will toggle the whole page row to be selected or not selected. So we'll just check the entire, uh, check the entire row. Okay, and then this. Can okay, so after we have made it into a self closing component, so let's actually uh, render all the cells. So each cell will just be the the, the individual row checkboxes, the individual rows here, right? So let's just uh, define that. So it'll be a function that takes in the row. We can destructure the row from it. And we'll return a check a box within it, a self-closing component, right? It's going to take in a few things. So it's checked when the row dot get is selected. So we control it, right? We want to have a control checkbox. So if it's selected, we check it. If not, we uncheck change. So when they actually click on the checkbox, we want to toggle the value, right? So we we'll take the value and just do row dot toggle selected. We we'll just do double exclamation value. So this will basically change it to a boolean value. So uh, the issue here is checkbox yeah, should be check box with a lower with a lower B here. Okay, let's save it. Okay, that's good. And then let's just uh, save it. And we can now see that there should be a checkbox showing up here. Okay, and the reason why it's actually not showing up here is because it's a classic React mistake again. So you can see that this is an explicit function. So we actually need to return the checkbox here, return. And then for here, we also want to uh, return it here. So let's save the function. So now we're actually returning the checkbox. And then now we can see that when we press on this, it selects everything. And then we can also select individual checkboxes for that selected rows. Yeah. And then the last thing here is actually under this uh, select column, right? Under this cell, we want to just enable sorting. So we actually don't want it to be sorted because it doesn't make sense to sort, like what? Sort uh, the checkboxes, right? And also we don't want to hide it. So enable hiding equals to false. So let me just tie up this thing for you. So you see this enable hiding equals to false. If you come back to the page, so remember when we did the get out columns of filter, right? We can see the column dot get can hide. In this case, it will return false, right? Because we explicitly tell the column that we do not want it to be hidden. So we come back here to the columns. You can see that the select uh, ID here is not shown in this list here because it cannot be hidden. Therefore, it will not show up in this uh, list of columns that is able to be hidden. So we're doing well. So lastly, we just need to maintain the state, right? So 
whenever uh, the, the roles have been selected, we want to maintain that in the state so that we can actually uh, console the log it out and see what columns have been selected. So we just maintain a get a row selection state and then get row selection equals to react.use state. In this case, it's just going to be a, a normal object, empty object. And then we want to pass it into react table. So on row selection change, we just want to uh, set a row selection uh, set. So this will be set row selection. So we'll just be set row selection here. Save it. Okay, so whenever the row has been uh, changed, we'll just update our internal state so that we can console the log it out. And within the state, we also want to uh, just put in the row selection state. So let's actually try console the logging out the row selection state. So we can see that what changes whenever we select the row. I'm going to open up the console here. But make sure you guys can see the console. So whenever we click on this, like you can see that this has been updated. So the object will contain the index and whether it has been selected. In this case, it will be true and true. So index 0 will be the first item. And so if you select like index 5, right, then it will be 0 will be checked, 1 will be checked, and index 5 will be checked. Then if you select all of them, obviously then the, the object return will be uh, everything here. Then we can use this use this data to either like let's say you want to do a bulk delete. We can use all these indexes to index within the, the table and then uh, manually make a post request to your backend to delete all these rows. So just demonstrating that what you can do with this uh, row selection internal state that we have done here. Okay, and lastly, uh, lastly we just want to just uh, have this uh, item to show uh, how many rows has been selected, right? So in order to accomplish that, we just want to come down here. So all the way down here. So just before closing div, let's add a new div here, right? And then it will have a class name of flex dash one, text dash sm, text dash muted uh, foreground, and then within here we we'll just do table dot get filtered selected row model dot rows, sorry, dot rows dot length, right? So this will get us uh how many items have been selected, of right. Table dot get filtered row model dot rows dot length row selected. So this will get the the number of rows has been selected, and this will get the entire data row. So if we save that, we can come back here and we can see uh zero of one thousand rows selected. So let's just refresh the page. So right now, uh, if we select that, we can see that. Uh, the rows have been updated. So two out of row, 1,000 rows has been selected. So that's good. We have completed the data table. So the last few steps here is we'll just add some styling. So I'm going to teach you how to add this uh, team toggle to make it light and dark team and also give it this orange team. And then I'm going to show you how to add this export to Excel button feature here. So firstly, let's actually add a container, right? Because we right now see this table is stretching all the way to the uh, to the side of the screen and that doesn't look very nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some styling. So because this data table is a component by itself, I'm going to come down to the page.tsx. So wrapping this component, we have a div, uh, we have a div, and this div will just uh, wrap the entire component and will give you a class name of container, padding y of tang and mx auto. So let's also just return this, uh, return. So let's save this. So this container class is by Tailwind. So we just give uh, the, some margin, some padding right and left. And we'll give you a, some padding Y of 10. And obviously you want to center it in the screen. So let's save it and then you can see that it looks much better. So it's uh, more centered within the screen and then it's just more uh, close together. So for this columns button, let's um, add some margin beside it. So I'm going to come back to the data table. So let's search for the columns button which we declared it here. I'm going to add a class name of margin left of 4, save it. So we have a nice margin here. Okay, so now let's actually add the team toggle. So for that, I'm going to come down to uh, the dark, dark mode uh, section of Shadstian. So here they actually teach us how to add the dark team. So the first step here will be actually install a, a new package called next-teams. So that will help us maintain the dark mode. So I'm going to come down here, clear it. I'm going to do npm install next-teams. I'm going to install that package. I'm going to come back to the documentation. I'm going to just uh, create a new uh, component called 
team-provider.tsx. So come to the folder structure. Under components, I'm going to create a team, uh, team-provider.tsx. I'm going to uh, copy this entire thing. I'm going to paste it here. So these team providers will just wrap our entire application so that it will provide the application with information on whether it's duck or light team. I'll save the file and then we actually want to uh, follow here. So we want to wrap the entire layout with this team provider. So I'll come back to my layout.tsx here. I'm going to come down to below the HTML here. I'm going to just import the team provider from this uh, from the component we just created. And I'll wrap the entire thing here. So we're just going to pass in a few things here. So the first thing we're going to pass in here is we can see that they want the attribute default team and enable system, right? So we can copy this entire thing here, copy and then uh, paste it here. So attribute class, so we are using the class to toggle whether it's like dark or light team. The default team is going to be system because we're going to respect the user's decision on whether they want light or dark team. And we just want to enable the system so that we can able to read the system's uh, preferences. So let's save that. And right now, uh, doesn't have any change. So let's add the button. So let's add this button for them to whether select either light or dark team. I'm gonna come down here. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down here a bit. So we're gonna add this mode toggle. I'm gonna copy the code here. I'll copy this code. I'm gonna create a new component. All right. It's gonna be called team toggle.tsx. I'll paste it in. All right. So this component will allow us to trigger the team. So you can see that it sets the team to light and dark mode. And the next thing here is I'm just gonna make it a reusable component. So this mode toggle, I'm gonna change it to team toggle. Right, it's gonna we're gonna have uh, some props. So what this props is, right? These props are gonna be uh destructured from HTML uh attributes, attributes, right? And then it's gonna have the HTML div element attributes. So what I'm saying is that this component will accept any props that normal HTML div element will accept. Then from them we can destructure a class name and then the rest of the props like on click or uh, on hover or anything like that. And then here we're gonna wrap this entire component with a div. Wrap this entire with a div. And then we're gonna pass in the custom class name. So this class name will be inherited from the component. So we do uh we'll just pass in the class name that we have destructured from the props and then we'll also pass in the rest of the props here. So let's save it. Okay, everything looks good. Close out the file. We'll come back to our data table. Okay. So just beside this columns uh button here. So I'm gonna just uh just above this button, I'm gonna add a new uh I'm gonna import the team toggle component that we just created. Right? I'm gonna pass it a class name of margin left of 4. I'm going to save it. So if we come back to our component here, we can see now that there should be a component that shows up here. Okay, perfect. And you can see that it has been switched to dark team for me. So then we can switch between light and dark team and that is how we add the dark mode feature. So you can see that it looks good no matter in dark mode or light mode. Okay, and let's add one more thing for the teaming. So this is a new chat scene feature that I'm really excited about. If you come under the teaming section, you can see that they added new colors for us, which I think looks really beautiful. So I'm going to add this green color uh, team to our app. So how do we actually do that? We just uh, select the green color. I'm going to press copy code. I'm going to copy the CSS. So they want us to copy this into our CSS file. So we just need to come back to our globals.css. Okay. Instead of having this uh, layer base, I'm going to delete everything uh, down here. So I'm going to have these three lines of code. Then I'm going to take whatever they asked me to copy. I'm going to paste it in here save it then i'm going to come back to my code and we can see that it has become a green colored team so i think that looks really nice right so it has a green team to it so it just acts that nice little accent for your app so that's how you do theming within uh, chat cn right now okay so the last thing here is we want to add the export to excel function here export to excel okay so in order to do that let's actually create a new uh file under slash lib let's create a new file called uh under slash lib, let's create a new file called xlsx.ts. So this file is going to contain the function. We're going to export a function called uh, download to Excel. So we're going to basically take this function later and then we'll call it. And then this will just uh, download the Excel into our browser. So for this uh, Excel feature, we need to install a new package. So this pa package is called 
uh, JSON dash S XLSX. So uh, we'll install this package here. So this package will give us the ability to convert a JSON object, which is an array, our data into the Excel. So let's close out this terminal. So the first, uh, first few things is we're gonna import XLSX, uh, from JSON as XLSX. Okay. So the first, how we actually use this is we must first define the array. The we want to define the columns in which the Excel will hold, right? So let's just uh do the columns equals to an array. So these columns will have a type of uh, I JSON sheet, which can also import as a type from JSON as XLSS, right? So we can take this I JSON sheet and just give us some type annotation. So the first object is, uh, we'll take in the sheet name. So this sheet name, I'm gonna name it just uh, persons. Okay. And then under the columns, these columns will be an array. So for each column, we can actually define the column within the Excel we want. So for the first column, we'll name it uh, person ID, and then we'll have the value of ID. So this ID will match exactly what is uh, being accessed within here. So this ID, first name, last name, this will show up as a value. So this value must match there. This label is just a human friendly name so that when you see in the Excel, it will show person ID as the column. Okay, and then obviously we have a label of first name and then the value of uh, first name. So this first name must match whatever is within your data here. And then we'll do the same. So let's just do up here. So the last name, last name. So we're gonna access it as last underscore name. And then we'll do uh, email gender. So gender and oops, uh, email. Okay. And then we have also a date of birth, right? So label of uh, date of birth, but this will be special because we don't want to uh, give them this ugly ISO timestamp. We want to give you a human readable format. So what we can do is uh, for this value, we'll take in the original row and we just return a new date. So we can access row dot date of birth of birth dot to locale date string. So this just gives us a custom function to actually uh, return uh, a nicely formatted string within the Excel cell. So just ignore this error. I mean, this is just, we know that this is gonna be a string, but then it's gonna have a type mismatch or something. So it's okay, we just ignore the error. We, we know that the date of birth will exist. And lastly, under the columns, we'll pass in the content. So this content will actually be the JSON object, a uh, JSON array, right? So to get the JSON array, we'll take in as a function. So this data, right? This data will have, uh, so actually just this data, we can actually import from the people, right? So import uh, people, people from people. So this is the mock data. And for this content, we'll just pass in the people. Okay, so with that, uh, let's look at error. Okay, so after we have defined the columns, right, we can actually uh, have some settings. So let's just put some settings. So we have the file name equals to people Excel. So this is whatever file name uh, will show up at when you download the Excel into your browser. Then lastly, we can just do XL SX. We pass in the columns, uh, columns and settings. Save it. So these columns will, actually this should be uh, IJSON sheet array here, right? Cause then we can have multiple sheets. So let's say you have sheet one is person, you can have another sh uh, sheet here. So this is gonna be an array of, of sheets. Okay, so with that here, we have finished this function, right? We can export out this function which we have done. And then within our, if you come back to our data table here, Above this uh, team toggle, we can also add another button for this Excel function, right? So we'll just do uh, export to Excel. Then on click, we just want to uh, trigger the download to Excel function, which we import from our library. Let's save it. And then let's go back to our thing here. And then you show up, the sh it will show the button here. Okay, cool. So we have this button now. So let me just add a starling. So let's just give you a class name of margin level 4 again, save it, and then now we can see that light mode and dark mode works well, and when we click on this export to Excel, hopefully, and we can see that people Excel, so we can see that this people Excel file name matches uh, matches whatever we give it in this uh, name here, people Excel. 
So let's open the Excel spreadsheet and we'll be able to see. And once we open the Excel spreadsheet, we can be able to see all the data here. And we can also see the nicely formatted date of birth that we've given the custom value through this uh, function here. Yeah. So that has come to the end to the video. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and how to actually build up really beautiful forms with React Table and also ShadCN. So remember that React Table will give you the functionality while ShadCN gives you the beautiful UI to actually build on top of the functionalities given by React Table. So if you enjoyed this video and you've learned something from it, please do like, comment, and subscribe on the channel. It'll help me a lot. And other than that, happy coding and thank you for watching.